we thank the Lord for another night of being here. I thank God for you all coming back. We're going to continue our lesson on uh, only those who are born blind will see Jesus Christ. If you have your Bibles, turn to the first chapter of Galatians. Start reading at uh, verse 10, and it reads, For do I now persuade men or God, or do I seek to, pr to please men? For if I yet pleased men, I should not be the servant of Christ. Now this is Paul talking. Tonight we're going to look at uh, the Apostle Paul, how uh, he went so far into his own way, where he was... Uh, uh, raised up a Pharisee, and uh, he was a a smart man in what he in what he believed. So he's he's saying, "Do I seek the favor?" That word "persuade" means seek the favor of yeah. God, men or God, yeah. or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. Amen. So when you're a uh, 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 man pleaser, you're not you're not a God pleaser. Most of the time, if you're pleasing uh, God, then you're going to have men raise up against you yeah. and things. And so that's when the uh, pressure comes on as uh, who are you going to serve? Are you going to continue to serve God or are you going to, to uh, uh, buckle down and try to, to compromise and try to please both God and men? And so uh, for those that are just coming out, we're in the first chapter of the book of Galatians. Was reading at uh, verse 10. And so when we uh, make a decision to start serving the Lord, uh, we first have to count the cost yeah. that it takes to serve him. Amen. There is uh, more to it than, you know, just going to church and Bible study and, it, and those things. There's more to it than that. Amen. And uh, if you're real serious about serving the Lord and you are, completely sold out, then you're going to uh, automatically have enemies yeah. and things, you know, and people will be coming against you uh, in your daily walk. Now, no, it might not be uh, on the surface. It might not appear to be that it's against uh, your Christ walk. But I, I believe, you know, it's a, it's a funny thing. People might not know how you are in the Lord, and they might not know that you're standing up for Jesus Christ. But the spirit in them knows that. Yeah. And that'll cause them to come against you yeah. and things. And so, you know, you don't don't take it personal if somebody's uh coming against you and, and trying to serve the Lord because I didn't look at it, well that's just the spirit that's that's doing that. Yeah. Just trying to discourage you. Yeah. Verse eleven says, But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. Many people, they believe that uh, that Paul, that this was just something that Paul wrote, mm -hmm. that he just picked up a pencil and just started writing whatever felt good, he just wrote it down. Mm -hmm. But what we read here are the words of God. Yeah. Regardless of what the author's name is, it's all the word of God. Yeah. And so that's the way we have to treat it. Yeah. Now, God used men to, to uh, pen the Bible, to write the Bible. Mm -hmm. But yeah. the words in the scriptures are, are, are ordained of God. They were here before these men got here. They just wasn't put down yet. <laughs> and so the gospel, he's saying the gospel that is preached of him is not after man. Verse 12 says, For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Now something happened to Paul for him to be able to see 
Jesus Christ. He was a man that was completely against the church of Jesus Christ. And he really thought that he was right in what he was doing. Now, uh, I want us to, to get what, 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 uh, what we're trying to bring out tonight, that Paul was a man. He was a church leader. He was a Pharisee. And he believed that he was doing God a favor by persecuting those that followed Jesus Christ. Amen. That same mindset is in the world today. Yes. People believe that they're doing God a favor by following, uh, by persecuting the church of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, on, on the level, you know, they, don't, they, might not, they might not know what's going on. Mm -hmm. But if you've seen Jesus Christ, in other words, if you were born blind and the Lord opened your eyes and allowed you to see him, then you're going to naturally stick out like a sore thumb. Mm -hmm. Because there's, there's more people in the church organizations and worlds that don't have the revelation of Jesus Christ yet than do have it. Mm -hmm. And so naturally you're thought of as being odd. Well, where do you get that from? You know, where, where is that coming from? Where do you see that in the scriptures? And, you know, you get those kind of questions and things. And all along, it's, it's been in the word of God all along. And they act like that it's something that you made up, that you've come up with this on your own. Mm -hmm. And this is what Paul is saying here. This, I didn't get this from man. I got this from God. Mm -hmm. yeah. Verse 13 says, For ye have heard of my conversation, in other words, manner of life, in time past in the Jews' religion, mm -hmm. how that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it, and profited in the Jews' religion above many my equals in mine own nation. Yeah. Now, Paul was a Pharisee of the Pharisee. Amen. He wasn't just some Boy Scout, you know, that just was zealous. He was, I mean, he was out there really fighting for the cause. Yeah. Right. He had more heart than what <laughs> the, the other Pharisees had. Right. <laughs> you know, uh, I've noticed uh, that... The, some of the best Christians that you got in this earth are people that were, and some of the most zealous Christians that you got in this earth that are serving God with all their heart. At one time, they were serving the devil with all their heart. Amen. Some of the best Christians that you find in this earth were some of the worst sinners in this earth at one time. Amen. Boy, they just out there in the world just doing everything they were big and bad enough to do. Now, when God get a hold of them, they take that same energy that they were using to serve the devil and they take it and serve God. That's what, that's what Paul, that's what brought Paul in. That same energy that he used to persecute the church, God used that same energy to, to get him to serve him. And the sin, now he was going all over the place persecuting the church and getting them letters of approval to throw men and women in prison. And when God got a hold of them, he used that same energy and went all over the place preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so this is how, how God works. I, you know, when I see uh, somebody who the world will consider, uh, or who we might consider, uh, you know, like a real bad sinner that's just out there doing everything that they're big and bad enough to do, I don't, I don't think the same thing most people think. I think, well, Lord, what ever happened if you get a hold of that person? Whatever, what would have happened if Jesus Christ would have, if somebody would have uh, 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 witnessed to Adolf Hitler? He have saved half the world. <laughs> but see, the devil got there first because the church was sleeping. <laughs> and so the devil got foot soldiers. You know, he, he got foot soldiers that, and you, that he used. And we look at him like, well, ain't no help for them. We, you know, Lord ain't going to be able to get that. It's just too much devil in that person. And we forget about how we were. <laughs> I believe the Lord saved uh, me. He can save anybody. All we have to do is pray that the Lord will touch their hearts and minds to give them the mind to come to him. But instead, Christian folks, we back down. You know, we can't, can't, can't get him saved. Well, he way out there. <laughs> but the Lord don't want us to be that way. The whole reason, one of the biggest reasons that uh, Jesus Christ used Paul the way he did was to show his grace and mercy. Yeah. He was a man that now he was a man that was persecuting the, the Jews, persecuting those that believed. They called them in the way, that were of the way, persecuting the people of the way. In other words, the people of course Jesus Christ said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Yeah. 
So they were persecuting people that followed Jesus Christ. And, and, and uh, he was just, wasn't nobody more zealous than Paul was. Everybody knew Paul was Saul. Everybody knew Saul's name. He had the whole church shaking up. Now, I want you to think about this. Here's a man uh, uh, just out persecuting people and, and things, and, and the apostles of Jesus Christ, they were bold in, in raising the dead and, and healing the sick and doing these things. But when Brother Saul come along, they all scattered. That show you what kind of terror Saul is struck in people. They were afraid of Saul. <laughs> I guess I look at it kind of like uh, what happened with the prophet Elijah. After he had defeated all the prophets of Baal and, and things, one, and you know, wasn't, wasn't afraid of them, had killed them all. One woman got after him, he ran for cover. That woman struck terror in him. And so this is the same thing that's, that happened with, with, uh, with, the, with uh, Saul here. He had got up such a name, and when people heard he was around, they just were afraid of him because he was zealous for what he was doing. Now, you know, now I believe this. I believe it's easy for the Lord to, to get someone if they are completely serving the devil. What I mean by that, of course, you're only serving, there's only two masters you can serve. And a lot of people don't know that they're serving the devil. And so it's hard to convince them that they need to get saved because they think they're straddling the fence. They think that they're okay. But if someone is completely over on the other side of the fence, I mean, they ain't hanging out in the middle. They just are completely living for the devil. It's easier to win them to Christ because they know what kind of condition that they're in. Yeah. And Saul, he knew what kind of, you know, he knew that he was completely on the other side of Jesus Christ. He thought he was right. But he was completely against the name of Jesus Christ. What it was, Saul wasn't born blind yet. You see, he, he grew up and, and profited in the Jews' religion. Amen. A lot of people today, they grow up and profit in their religion. Amen. Not born blind, they have a, a preconceived idea already of what it takes to serve the Lord. Yeah. And they have a, a, a preconceived idea of who Jesus Christ is. Verse 14 says, and profited in the Jews' religion above many my equals in mine own nation, being more exceedingly zealous of the traditions of my fathers. But it, when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace to reveal his son in me that I might preach him among the heathen, immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood. And what, what causes a lot of people to get uh, mixed up in seeing the Lord Jesus Christ is they confer with flesh and blood. Yeah. The word of God is what we confer with. Yeah. Uh, no matter what I preach, uh, look, examine it in the word of God. Yeah. That's the way you, you stay safe is by the word of God. Yeah. That's the reason why so many people were able to be led off and in these cults and things because they wasn't examining what these preachers were preaching by the word of God. The first thing the devil does when he wants to separate you from God is get you away from the word of God. So he might have a preacher come along that's, that's preaching the word of God and it sounds good and things. And you know, you've heard of the, the past, the people that have committed suicide and things in these cults. And so the leaders, they start out good preaching the word of God and it sounds like they're preaching the word of God. But after that leader have gained so much trust from people, then they put down the word of God and they just take what he says for, for law, yeah. for the word of God. And yeah. through that, he's able to lead them astray. Yeah. And so the first thing that the devil do is get you away from the word of God. Yeah. That's what happened to Adam and Eve. God had gave a word, do not eat of the tree. Yeah. That was their word. That was their Bible of the day. Yeah. There's only one scripture. <laughs> They couldn't follow that scripture. And so Satan, Satan was able to deceive Eve by getting them away from the word of God. Yeah. And so we, it's important that we stay close to the word of God. Let's turn to the second, uh, second Corinthians. Second Corinthians, the 11th chapter. Now, 
And we're still talking about Paul. Yeah. Now, uh, a lot of people uh, believe that to be an apostle, you had to actually uh, see the Lord Jesus Christ personally. Exactly. That you had to, had to, you know, physically walk with him. Yeah. And so we see the, the uh, first 12 apostles and things. Now, when Paul come along, uh, a lot of people, even in the churches, believe that he was preaching something different yeah. and things. And they had a problem with what he was preaching. Yeah. And so here, when we read these uh, scriptures here, he's showing that he's, he's an apostle. Yeah. And he suffered just as much as the original yeah. apostles that were with Jesus Christ. Yeah. God validated Paul yeah. through, through the, through the uh, scriptures and the revelation that he got. Now, God could have fixed it to where when, when he got saved, he could have just went to Jerusalem and listened to Peter, James, and John preach and got, you know, his revelation from them. But God took Paul and gave him the revelation that he got. Now, that what it does now, it, it shows that the Holy Spirit is the Holy Spirit everywhere. It wasn't just given to the original apostles. That I can be way here, down here somewhere, and somebody can be way in Africa somewhere, and if we got this Holy Spirit, we're going to supposed to be preaching the same thing. Amen. We'll start reading in verse 16 of chapter 11 of 2 Corinthians. It says, I say again, let no man think me a fool, if otherwise, yet as a fool receive me, that I may boast myself a little. That which I speak, I speak it not after the Lord, but as it were foolishly, in this confidence of boasting, seeing that many glory after the flesh, I will glory also. For ye suffer fools gladly, seeing your, ye yourselves are wise. For ye suffer, if a man bring you into bondage, if a man devour you, if a man take of you, if a man exalt himself, if a man smite you on the face. I speak as concerning reproach, as though we had been weak, Howbeit, whereinsoever any is bold, I speak foolishly, I am bold also. Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more, in labors more abundant, in stripes above measure, in prisons more frequent, in death often of the Jews five times received our forty stripes save one thrice was I beaten with rods once I was stoned thrice I suffered shipwreck a night and a day I have been in the deep in journeyings often in perilous perils of waters in perils of robbers in perils of by my own countrymen in perils by the heathen in perils in the city in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness and painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness. Beside those things that are without, that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the churches, who is weak and I am not weak, who is offended and I burn not. If I must needs glory, I will glory of the things which concern mine infirmities. The God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is blessed forevermore, knoweth that I lie not. In Damascus, the governor under Aretas, the king, kept the city of the Damascenes with a garrison, desirous to apprehend me. And through a window in a basket was I let down by the wall and escaped his hands. Now, uh, I'm not going to go on there. I, I'm just wanting to bring out a point that uh, when they were questioning Paul's apostleship and his authority that God had gave him, he listed a whole list of things that he had went through. Amen. Now, the point I'm trying to bring out is this. Here's a man that at one time was persecuting the church, Amen. was throwing men and women in prison for the name of Jesus Christ. And he thought that God was doing him a service, that he was doing God a service. Yeah, yeah. He, he really thought that he was in God's will by doing this. What was it? It was because he was blind. Yeah. It was because he, he was doing what he had been brought up to believe. Yeah. Yeah. 
That's why only those that are born blind will see Jesus Christ. Yes. Now, some, somewhere along the line, somewhere from him persecuting the, the uh, Christians and things, something happened in between that point and this what we just read here. Yes. Something happened to make him uh, go through all of these things. Amen. See, uh, when you aren't born blind and you don't see Jesus Christ, you aren't willing to do these things for Jesus Christ. Amen. He received 39 stripes five times with the cat of nine tails, that, you know, the Roman flagrum and things. Yes. He took all of that, was shipwrecked three times. I mean, he went through a lot, was bitten by a snake and was stoned, and they perceived that he was dead, and then he got up and just walked on off. And I, he went through a whole lot of things. Yes. Something happened to change his course. Yes. Just like something have to happen to change our course. If you have your Bibles, let's go to the 8th chapter of Acts. Eighth chapter of Acts. Start reading in verse one. It says, "And Saul was consenting unto his death." It's talking about Stephen. And at the same time, and at that time, there was a great persecution against the church which was at Jerusalem, and they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. And devout men carried Stephen to his burial and made great lamentation over him. As for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering into every house and hailing men and women, committing, committed them to prison. Now let's go to the ninth chapter of Acts. We'll start reading at verse 1 says, And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest, and desired of him letters to Damascus to the synagogues, that if he found any of this way. That, now, uh, that was the church, one of the, church, the churches, one of their first names. They were called the people of the way, or the people in the way. <laughs> says, Whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. Now, if you remember, Jesus said he's the light. Mm -hmm. Something has to happen in people's lives to get them to see that light. Yes. Most, and most, now, this is a drastic event. Something usually drastic has to happen to get people to see that light. Mm -hmm. Rarely do you get people that are just believe, you know, believe what they see. A lot of times it seems like they have to go through something or something has, you know, something has to happen in their life. Yeah. And most of the time, the more drastic it is, the better they'll be in the end for it. Yeah. You rarely see people that'll just hear the word and, 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 and believe it, what they hear and just go on, yeah. you know. Yeah. A lot of times there has to be, you have to have a real experience with, with the Lord Jesus Christ yeah. and him reveal yourself. Now, I remember... When I first started living for the Lord, I didn't get, you know, uh, anything real divine right off the bat. I just started believing, well, Lord, this is, this is how it's going to be. I need to start worshiping you and serving you and things. And it wasn't until later that the Lord began to reveal himself to me. I mean, in a real personal way. Yes. And uh, I would wake up and I'd just be full of joy. I'd be like, well, Lord, you really are real. You know, now I've been serving him for a couple of years already. But once he started really revealing himself to me, I found joy. And yeah. thinking, Lord, you this is this thing is real, and yeah. you know, and then the most, and then on top of that, well, if you real, then I guess heaven and heaven is real, heaven and hell is real, and that's why I was on my way to, you know, <laughs> if I hadn't straightened up, and so it's a joy when the Lord really reveals Himself to you, yeah. you know, because then you, I mean, you believe it by faith, yeah. you know that He's real, but you know, it's it's a joy when you begin to see physically. And begin to understand it, and you know it, it, it go, it moves over from your spirit, man, to your flesh. Like, well, Lord, this thing is real. Amen. I'm serving a real God. This ain't just, this just ain't, you know, the Bible ain't just something that we, somebody wrote, you know, for us to just. It, this thing, this whole thing is real. Yes. And then after you get that revelation, then you start thinking, well, Lord, there's a whole lot of people out there that don't know that. Yes. 
it's a whole lot of people out there in the world that just going along about, you know, about their daily life, not knowing that there's a God watching everything that they're doing. Not knowing that there's a God that's got their life in his hands. And he can snatch the breath out of their life anytime he get ready. And so that's when you get the passion for souls, is when you realize that this, this really is real. One day we're going to have to stand before the Lord. Now Saul hadn't had a, an experience with Jesus Christ yet. That's why he was breathing out threatens against the followers of Jesus Christ. Because he hadn't had a, all he knew was what he had been taught all his life. That's all he went by. Amen. Verse 4 says, And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go in the, into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. Now here Paul had, had a, a real experience with the Lord Jesus Christ. Man. I want you to see that when he, when the Lord Jesus made himself known personally to him, he, he didn't care anything else about what he had learned in his past. Yeah, no. He didn't care anything else. He didn't care anything about profiting in the Jews' religion anymore. Yeah, that religion was dead as far as he was concerned. Yeah. Now he asked a question, Lord, what will you have me to do? He thought he knew what God wanted him to do already. And that's yeah. what he was out there doing, persecuting the church, because he thought that was God's will. Yeah. But when he uh, saw the Lord Jesus Christ for the first time, then he asked the Lord Jesus Christ, what will you have me to do? In other words, I'm going to forget everything that I had been doing. Now I know I was wrong for what I've been doing. Yeah. Now what will you have me to do? So when you, Paul, I mean, it was just a complete 180 yeah. that Paul did. Yeah. Wasn't no in between. It was just completely one on his way to, to, to persecute the church. Next thing you know, he has a, 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 a visitation from the Lord. And then from that point on, he's completely changed. Yeah, yeah. That's the way the Lord works. Yeah. People think you got to go through all kind of motions and, and, and things. When the Lord gets you, he got you. Yeah. you. When you make the decision to start living for the Lord, you belong to him from that time on. Yeah. When you surrender your life, now you might be a babe in Christ, or and you know, might need to grow and things like that. But once you surrender, my children, when they were born, they were babies. But from the day one, they belong to me. They, now, they had some growing to do, but from day one, they belong to me. Verse, we'll read verse 7. It says, And the men which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice but seeing no man. And Saul arose from the earth, and when his eyes were opened, he saw no man. But they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. Now, what's going to happen? He done become blind. Yeah. He's blind now. <laughs> that's, that's what we're talking about only those who are born blind will see Jesus Christ Amen. so he went from, thought, from thinking that he saw the will of the God you know he, he went from thinking that he saw the will of God he believed he was doing the will of God that's what he saw for that time yeah. but when Jesus got a hold of him he became a blind man yeah. he didn't know what his next step was going to be he, all he, he was supposed to just follow what, what Jesus, Jesus told him, arise and go into the city. And from there to be told what you should do. Yeah. So in other words, now he's in a blind state. Lord, I don't know what your perfect will is. But now I'm going to go, I'm going to do what I know to do and go to the city like you told me. And, you know, now I'm blind. You see, now it's like I got to start all over again. Everything that I learned is out the door. Yeah. Yeah. It's got to be. Yeah. <laughs> Verse 9 says, And he was three days without sight, and neither did eat nor drink. And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias. And he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the street, which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he prayeth. And hath seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him, that he might receive his sight. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard many, by many, of this man, how much evil he hath done to thy saints. 
at Jerusalem. So Saul, he was a terrible fellow. He was just completely out there. Now I want you to see the uh, the uh, I want you to see the humbleness of, of of Saul here. You know, it's something to be thinking that you're doing the Lord's will, and then and then God blinds you, and you know you find out that you've been wrong all along. It's something to change over. It takes humbleness to do that. It takes humbleness to say, well, Lord, I've been doing this thing wrong all along. Now what will you have me to do? You know, that takes humbleness because now people are going to look at you and they're going to think, well, you just off, off your rocker from the get-go. You can't make up your mind what you want to do. That's, what, that's the problem. That, now, when he went back to the people that he was working with and tried to preach the Lord Jesus Christ, they rejected him because they hadn't been made blind yet. <laughs> Verse 14 says, And here he hath authority from the chief priests to bind all that call on thy name. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. And then Ananias went his way and entered into the house and putting his hands on him, said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, that appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest, has sent me, that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. And immediately there fell from his eyes as it had been scales, and he received sight forthwith and arose and was baptized. And when he had received meat, he was strengthened. Then was Saul certain days with the disciples which were at Damascus. Now here's what I want you to see. It says that there were scales, there were scales on his eyes, and they fell from his eyes. The, the spiritual side of it is this. There were always scales on Saul's eyes. That's what was causing him to persecute the church. He was always blind. He just didn't know it. Man. There's a lot of people today that's blind and don't know it. Yeah. They're out driving and things like that, you know, and they can physically see, but spiritually they're blind. Yeah. Yeah. Paul was, was spiritually blind. He thought he was doing God a service. But in the end, God had to physically make him blind. That helped him to see spiritually what, where he was wrong at. And so that's the only way that the Lord can help us is if we'll be humble and admit, Lord, you know, I'm spiritually blind. I don't understand everything that I read or, or whatever the case. You know, that's when the Lord can help you. Just empty yourself. Now, if you go on and read about uh, Paul's life, now he was a Pharisee. In other words, he kept the law. And he taught. That's what he taught. And things, you know, you look into his history and, and things and see uh, what all he was, he was doing. But when you look at his ministry, after Jesus Christ got a hold of him, he never picked back up what he laid down. He never went back to what he had been doing. Once he received his sight, he kept his sight. Yeah. And he just constantly moved forward in the Lord. Yeah. And, and not only that, the Lord was able to use him because, see, Saul had a, had a uh, in-depth knowledge of, of the law. Yeah. He, he knew the scriptures, yeah. except he didn't know Jesus Christ. Amen. So he knew a lot of people, they know the words. They yeah. can memorize the Bible from, from Genesis to Revelation. Yeah. But do they know the spirit of that word? Yeah. See, he, Saul didn't know the spirit of the word. Yeah. He, knew the, he knew the Bible, he knew the scriptures, but he didn't know the spirit of those scriptures. He can only teach from his blind, from his blind perspective. Yeah. And so once God got a hold of him and really showed him what his will was, then he was able, if you read, you turn a little bit further in the, in, uh, the book of Acts, you'll read where he's before uh, uh, the council, and he's using the same scriptures to preach the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. See, it's been there all along. Yeah. The, the Lord Jesus Christ was in the prophets all along. Moses wrote about him. They, it, wasn't, it was just there all along. But until Jesus takes the scale off of people's eyes, they're not going to be able to see that. Yes, well, that's all I have for tonight.